Hi, welcome to Van School. My name is Jeffrey. This here is my partner Tucker. And we just finished um, installing these the batteries that are going to power this camper van. We're working on a 2017 Mercedes Sprinter. We're going to be turning this into a full camper. And it needs battery power to power the appliances. And so we choose to use 12 volt appliances. You can point at one right now. That's a 12 volt refrigerator that's now can be powered now that we have um, batteries in here I have this 12 volt um, chest style freezer from it's a refrigerator freezer and it's been sitting there warm because I have been putting off doing the batteries while I did other things the so I'll wire that up tonight so that 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 12 volt fridge can now get powered right into these batteries Reserve. So this is 225 amp hours of AGM deep cycle batteries, um, as opposed to AGM, as opposed to a lead acid battery. Lead acid batteries, if they tip, they can spill battery acid. They also happen to have a off gas that they 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 have a gas that's kind of toxic, and they freeze at a relatively low temperature compared to these. Anyways, these can be used outside in the van. You can I can leave these installed <clears throat> all winter long without a trouble from the freezing cold because um, these eight, these absorbed glass bat batteries are for um, are for year round use. So these happen to be two six volt. 225 amp hour batteries and then they're tied together in series and so you see I have the you know you do them in series red to the red to the black put uh, ties them together and now it's 12 volt battery that's 225 amp hours so you double by putting them together you now have a 12 volt battery system it's grounded into the truck itself here This bolt is a riv. This bolt is bolted into a riv nut that I put into a hole that was already in the van. You can see the van has all these holes in it uh, that are for different things. Well, it happens that a lot of these are five millimeter. If they're not, they're usually six uh, size holes that you can put riv nuts into. A riv nut, if you're not already using it in your build, they're amazing. You just put them into a hole with an expander thing, like you would any uh, like another a regular rivet. And but it's a threaded nut, so it's a threaded tube that you could then put this. This is a five millimeter bolt that's um, got a nice secure ground to it. This bank um, will have a whole bunch of things the fridge and the lights and the diesel heater that's in here and the fans, the uh, all these things, the pump for the sink all need. Um, what we do is we choose 12 volt versions of these things um, and they'll all run off these 12 volt batteries anything that we need that's a household appliance for like 110 for plugging in at home we have an inverter for that um, so we'll be tying in a, a 2000 watt inverter in here so this ba this these batteries need to be charged you know they'll get discharged by all those things i just list ticked off right by the end of the day using all those things these batteries can cycle down to 50 uh, percent of their capacity safely they say 30 percent so uh, you definitely recommend 50% cycling uh, is about as much as you want to discharge one of these um, for a long, happy life. They'll be fine to discharge, unlike the truck's battery. So this van has a starter in it, but those starter batteries are not meant to be powered down more than, you know, you're supposed to use 10% of, you know, they shouldn't get cycled down more than 90% of their capacity. Or So they're supposed to stay pretty much full all the time. They want to be full. Um, and they're charged all the time by the alternator. Well, <clears throat> the folks in the marine world came up with this clever way of charging their batteries that we're using in here. And what they're doing is they're using the alternator of the car itself and then using a voltage sensitive relay. So this relay here, it's just basically a switch and it's red light is on actually right now. So see, we just charged them up. So right now, this relay is in between, so this is the red that goes all the way to the red back to the battery itself that's that's the starter for this fan. And so we have the red lead. This big, long red lead goes back, and it's on the red lead for the van. And we have it tied into the red lead on this, my 12-volt bank here. And this relay is in between them. And so when I turn the truck on and... Um, 
the front battery is up over 13%, it'll open up the relay and it'll allow these to start charging off of the with the starter battery, right? So it's charging the whole time the truck's on. Getting 220 amps, right? Like as, as opposed to the 12 amps you have on the roof for the solar panels in comparison. So um, we're getting a lot of a really strong charge this way. And so every time, it's not foolproof because you can't just, you have to start the van and have it running for this to work. So if you want to be boondocking somewhere for a bunch of days, uh, you do need solar panels. And solar panels will do a great job um, when you have great weather. When you don't have good weather, they don't do a good job. That's just the inherent issue with solar panels. This is a great backup plan. So this, they call this a smart battery isolator. It's basically a voltage relay. So it senses 13 volts. And, as soon, and while all the time that we have 13 volts um, coming off of the battery, like it'll keep, it'll let these back ones charge. When I shut the truck off, long, it'll um, and start and use any kind of load, even just turn some lights on, the voltage will drop below 13 uh, to like 12.9, 12.8. As soon as that happens, this relay cuts off the front batteries from these back ones. And then I can safely use these back ones. So just behind that, I put like a circuit breaker. It's a 200 amp. You could use a fuse. It's a 200 amp circuit breaker. So any kind of fuse on the line. So this line goes back. You know, you can see I just tucked it away in the van. It's uh in the floor, it goes underneath the mat here. I guess I already put it back together, but our our starter battery is underneath the floor mat, for underneath your feet in the driver's seat of these Sprinter vans. All you gotta do, pardon me jumping around here, you just take off this little plastic trim piece that's by the doorstep. Once you take that trim piece off, this whole big rubber floor mat will come out and you can see the top of the battery. And then I just kind of snaked it around um, you know, through the trim, through a pre-existing hole in here, I put a rubber grommet on it. And then you can like run, run it through here. The only problem is that this pillar, your third, your, um, I think it's the C pillar, they call it. Um, there's not a channel through them. So I drilled the hole. I don't, I think you can see it. I drilled the hole that this is going through so that I could have a continuous run through the wall. So I got it running right back here. We just made these uh so this was like you know these isolators are like 80 bucks the circuit breaker was like ten dollars and then i um you can buy cable like two gauge cable like this with its terminals already on it but i just bought a jumper cable <laughs> split it down the middle this is 10 feet of the 20 foot jumper cable so there's still another 10 left for another van and then here's the black is from the other side it like took a razor down the middle and just kind of separated the two it's a great deal you get uh two <laughs> two 20 foot lengths of um stranded copper wire of two gauges uh for a great deal uh, then you just have to make your own i just make the terminals my i have a the terminals and make these myself like i could make one right now so see we just buy these like whatever and see i made this one you get the idea if you just kind of take the, let's see here, if I can do it while I'm shooting, <laughs> you just take like the, did it work? Just cut the end off, stick the terminal on there, voila, and then you just get your little, I'm doing this with the camera in my hand, is this working? It is working, I'm so psyched. Then you just get your little crimper out, you know, and, well, you get the idea. <laughs> it's a little shaky, but I just want to show, this is easy to do, that's why, it's like you could buy them already made and stuff, you know, it's like I get twice as much wire by making them myself for the same amount of money. So we're just trying to be smart and uh, be clever. And so there's my clever little way of charging um, as a backup. It's, you know, it's the primary way that keeps these batteries charged because the van's going every day. I actually ran these, uh, I charged a van this way for over two years without any solar panels on it because I was never stopping for more than a couple of days in one place. So it just worked just fine. So this is a great system. It'll maintain these batteries, no problem. Hey, thanks for... Um, Thanks for watching, tuning in to Van School. 
Um, appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If uh, you have any questions, put them in the comments and check back off. And we're just we're building this van. And I'll just keep shooting these um, as we're doing stuff. Thanks a lot. Have fun.